Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Brian Billman of Isotropic Systems. Brian, thank you for joining me today. Now, Isotropic, they're making waves in the market. Why? Well, we're taking a completely new and novel approach to solving the terminal challenges that are out there today. So what we're doing is we're using transformational optics to come up with essentially optical beamformers that give us all of the functionality that people want, where it's fully electronic beamforming, it's wide bandwidth, it's full operational bandwidth covering both commercial and government bands, giving a lot of flexibility and performance and functionality in the terminal, but without those main drawbacks that you typically see in flat panels. Uh, things like the power consumption and the cost and the scan roll-off. The optical beamformers really help us overcome those challenges. But you're not alone in pursuing the flat panel market. What makes you stand out? Right. Well, it's completely different what we're doing with these optical beamformers. So there's a lot of innovation out there today. A lot of people doing some really cool engineering work to solve essentially the same problem that we're trying to solve. Um, but what we get with these optical beamformers is, um, if you think about electronically scanned arrays, phased arrays, uh, you know, there's a lot of elements that are on all the time. They draw a whole bunch of power consumption. Um, they can be limited in bandwidth due to the phase combining that they're doing. So what people have started to move towards is digital phased arrays, right? And so this gives a lot of added uh, functionality. It gives you time delay. Um, gives you complex algorithm deployment that you can put in your digital beamformers. However, you don't see it a lot out there because they draw even more power than a typical phased array. And there's also a lot of expense associated with that as well. As soon as we put these optical beamformers, these lenses, over a grouping of feed and circuits, we can essentially use that digital beamforming and get all of that functionality, but without that power consumption issue. And what about the sectors? Who's particularly interested in this technology? Yeah. Well, that's one of the interesting approaches we're taking to design is that we're making it very modular and very flexible in our design. So at design time, we can come out uh, with very quickly a lot of different derivative products for all the different market segments. So what we're focusing on right now is a uh, KA band for our first product. Um, however, we have also proven out KU, both KU and KA in the chamber, in the GOAC chamber. Um, but we're focusing on KA for two reasons. Uh, one, because we really believe there's a lot of good capacity coming online, both Leo, Mio, and Geo in the K-Band, uh, with Inmarsat, SES, and Telesat. Um, but also because, you know, KA is so challenging for the terminal side of it. Um, but for us, as soon as we put this optical beamform over it, it becomes a lot easier for us. Uh, so we've decided to focus on KA for our first product coming out there. Now, you're attracting a lot of interest and you're working with some key people in the industry. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yep, so right now we're partnered, as you can see right here, we're partnered with uh, SES on our first terminal appointment. So um, right now we've decided with the features that we're able to offer um, to SES and on their Empower platform um, that we're really kind of tackling the all singing and dancing terminal, that high value terminal that's going to be offering uh, multi-beam for them so it can do make before break handovers. Um, it can also do some additional things with those additional beams, not just make before break, but also you can do things like sky mapping. So it gives you full situa situational awareness of all the different satellites that are out there at any given time. So if a blockage comes up or an interferer comes up, you can immediately switch over to another satellite. Um, those additional beams also for them help uh, with those interferers because you can use those additional beams to search and localize and hunt in on that specific interferer and then do things like active cancellation and nulling to protect yourself against that. Now in 2020, what are the key performance indicators for you this year? Right, so as I mentioned, um, we've already proven out both our KU um, lenses and feeds and circuits in a subarray in the chamber. We've then moved on, we've proved out our KA lenses, feeds and circuits in the chamber. Um, and just a couple months ago, we did our first uh, over-the-air test um, with the Avanti Hylos 4 satellite, um, which was kind of a big step forward for us as, as a team. Um, and now that we've kind of proven out um, all of the novel aspects of our technology, we're taking that and we're turning that into a product, right? So we're out there, we're talking to the customers and seeing what they need, bringing that back to the team and using that flexibility they have in the design to optimize our designs for those users, um, both for SES and the wider audience as well. So we're really taking that technology and turning it into a product. So taking all of that into account, looking forward, when are we going to see these antennas hitting the market in a substantial quantity? Yep, so towards the end of 2021 is where we're going to be having some hardware available for our partners um, to be doing some beta testing with. And then in early 2022, we're going to be rolling out uh, with our, our full KA uh, product line for a commercial release. Um, and then quickly following that later in 2022, we'll be coming out with the KU line. Brian, interesting times. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much.